Hey, I'm Chris Zett from Make Everything, and today we're going to talk about the process of designing and building this 700 pound steel menorah. Check it out! So here's what the menorah looks like, fully assembled and installed outside. But let's go back in time and I'll talk about the way it was designed, the process of building it, and the way that it all fits together. So check it out. So you can see the sort of modular aspects of the menorah here. So it's got four sets of arms that match. You can see those. And then they're all numbered. And they all have this sleeve kind of bung that I made. And when I, when I made this piece and I ordered all the material, I made sure that I got something that would sleeve in there without having to be turned down. I got pretty lucky and the tolerance was close enough that I didn't have to do anything crazy. Um, and then the way that I attached these, you can see the plug weld there. And uh, over here we have the sets of legs. Now the system that these all go together on is interesting and it was probably one of the more challenging parts of the whole build. Had I made this thing in a way that it was you know, assembled and welded, it would have been a lot easier to build, but this has to be taken apart and stored every year. So I had to make it so that it came apart and could easily go in, you know, a, a shed or in someone's basement. So you can kind of get an idea of the scale of it disassembled. You know, it's just these two piles of stuff and everything's manageable and pretty lightweight. But when it's totally put together, it weighs a, you know, over 700 pounds and it's pretty big. So let's put it together, make sure it all works. So you can see the way this base goes together. Basically these sleeves um, are joined to the opposite legs and then they telescope up. So you know you have one, two, three, four sleeves go up on this center shaft and uh, all the pipes are numbered. So they go sequentially, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know that the orientation is correct when I put these together. So the base, is really sturdy because of the way that uh, you know there are eight legs spread out and then the center column when I install this I'll actually post a uh, piece of steel into the ground but you know this thing is it's like is rock solid um, and the rest of it builds up from here and these holes are for allen key screws so let's get the rest of it on It's big. So here it is all assembled. And it goes together pretty easily. Right here, these little holes go uh, stainless socket cap screws. And there's two holes on every arm. It keeps it nice and registered. It makes it so that it always goes together the same way. It goes together easy. Looks pretty good after a year in storage and uh, a month out in the rain. So the challenging part of this build was to get this twist so that these pretty much wind up on a straight plane. This one's sticking out, but we'll straighten that out. These pretty much wind up on a straight plane from the side, but you know, they all come from more or less a round hub in the middle. And it was challenging to build to say the least because of that. And the way that these tubes are bent, so you're looking at one bend, then a seam, then another bend, then the joint, 
and then one bend for the legs. So the legs are all the same bend and the arms are a series of different size radii that I had to figure out and lay out and get to work. And then these joints, they're, if you look for them, you can pick them out because I'm not the greatest blender and welder, but they're pretty good. If I do say so myself. And all in all, it's a pretty, it's a massive piece. Definitely gets your attention. So the only way that I was able to build the menorah was with this. Um, this is a modified Harbor Freight tubing roller um, and Swag Off-Road makes a bunch of accessories for this that really turn it from like kind of a crappy tool to a really versatile electric hydraulic machine. So this upgrade kit from Swag and you know I don't have any deal going with Swag. I just bought all this stuff and I think it's awesome. So. You know, if you got to do this kind of work, you should buy it too. But basically, it's extension wings, and then this attachment here, which houses a bottle jack. And the other thing is a driver that goes on the axle, and then this is a Harbor Freight uh, pipe threader used for threading plumbing and gas pipes. And this is a low RPM, super high torque tool. So this allows the machine to basically drive the material through it and then with the bottle jack it applies way more pressure than you can with a screw which is how this is originally done and they also sell dies so i actually designed the menorah's tubing size based on the dies that i knew i could get from swag and when i designed this this piece i had no idea if it was going to work i just ordered the tubing and I ordered the dies and I didn't have any of the accessories for the tubing roller and I just tried to roll a piece of tubing and I couldn't get anything done. Um, that being said, I had already agreed to do the project and I was going to give it my best shot no matter what. So I called Swag up and I asked them, you know, what do I need to put on this tubing roller to make it work? And the guy told me, you know, buy the drive kit, buy the wings, buy the extension. I can't tell you how critical it was and how great it was. Um, and I joke with people all the time is, I would never have bought a tubing roller and spent, I probably spent about a thousand bucks on this tubing roller after all the stuff that I put on it. I never would have bought this because this is not the type of work I do. This machine has paid for itself probably 10 times, if not more than that. This machine has made more money in my shop than any other machine that I own. Anyway, it was easily able to roll the two and a half inch tubing that I made the menorah out of. The hard part was just getting it to line up correctly. And here's an example of a piece of the tubing that the whole menorah is made out of. And this is seam tubing um, and it's eighth wall. This is just a cutoff. I have plenty of scraps like this laying around the shop. These are kind of a tough size because, you know, what do you do with a slightly bent piece of two and a half inch tubing? Can't really make much out of it, but since I refuse to throw anything away, they've been kicking around the shop for a year. So now we're, uh, we're looking at the bottom side of the fixture, the back side, and you can see the junction box that I made in there. So basically what's going on in here is you've got these hot wires and these neutral wires, and they all uh, terminate and join together down here, eventually feeding to the main line, uh, which is that extension cord. And this is essentially just like a chandelier with nine bulbs. So now I go through the process of uh, hooking up the feed wires that come down from each stem, they hook them up there and then the whole thing lights up. So normally I feed these up through the bottom holes right here, but I'm not gonna do that for this test. I'm just gonna put it together, make sure that it works. We'll go from there, so let's, let's do that.
So something that you'll notice is that the wires that are providing power um, have the female side of the connecting end uh, and the wires that are coming down from the stems have the male end. So the idea there is that if a wire isn't connected, you can't accidentally touch a hot lead. You know, it's the same principle as on an extension cord, right? So the part that goes into the wall has the prongs and the part that you plug into is the female side. So I tried to make this as safe as possible just in case I wasn't the one setting it up. So now I just have to fish out the, the center column wire and plug it into this last one and we're good to go. One busted light bulb. So when I was designing this, one of the concerns was the safety of the bulbs and, you know, somebody were to break them or, you know, could they break? So what I did was I got some commercial grade fixtures that actually had a steel cage around a glass jar and I modified them to work up there. So now that the bulbs are installed, I just screw these glass jars on and it protects these. It's also nice to protect them from the snow and the rain. You know, uh, we are in New York and there's a very good chance that this will get snowed on while it's outside. So just put these on. So the way that I got involved in building a giant eight foot tall menorah, um, some people in my town were looking to have one made uh, to display in the village uh, during Hanukkah. And they had reached out to me to consult on the building process, basically help them find somebody that could build it and help them design it in a way that could be manufactured for a reasonable cost. So, you know, we looked at some concept sketches and some inspiration and then I sketched something up. I made a small prototype and then, you know, while I was sort of figuring out who I wanted to refer to do the job, I decided, you know, I live in the town and I wanted a project that would, you know, help expand my skill set and be a challenge, so I took this on. Um, when I started this project, I had absolutely no idea if it was going to work or how I was going to do it. Um, I knew that I could get the size radius that I needed based on the specs I got from Swag on the tubing roller, but I didn't know how it was gonna work out, how I was gonna get the bend, how it was gonna make it look even. I just winged it. So I rolled the tubing. Um, the way that it worked out was that if you look at this bend as one bend, the seam is here, um, and then going forward, the seam is here, 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 and here. So basically what would happen is I would roll a uh, half circle and it would give me two of this bend and I would cut the pipe right here and then this other half of this pipe wound up on this arm so basically I had to build half of the menorah and then the other half would just be a given so the same worked for every bend on the pipe basically I laid the whole thing out on the table full scale and I drew the curves with a protractor um, a compass actually um, and I knew that I would get, I was, I was drawing true curves and the tubing roller gives you true curves. It doesn't give you sort of half curves as long as you complete the rotation. So I knew that if I drew true curves, I could create true curves with the tubing roller. And then by cutting everything, I was able to lay it out in a way that it, it worked out. The most difficult part of the menorah was the, this base and this center column because everything had to wind up on an even plane. So to have everything twist out from the center was really challenging. It took a lot of messing around and a lot of mock-ups. Um, all in all, the whole project took me about 125 hours to build. Um, 
you know, everything was welded, ground. If there were any voids, I filled them. Then the entire thing was cleaned up with a Porter Cable Restorer with the Scotch Bright wheel. Um, at the time, the Restorer had like just come out. I saw it at Lowe's. I bought one, and I could not have done this project without it. Um, that it's a great tool. So now um, it's got a little bit of rust on it. This is not stainless. It's just mild steel. After I scotch sprayed it, when I built it, I coated the whole thing in water-based polyurethane. Um, I had tried to spray it with a spray on poly and it got really hazy and looked horrible. So two days before it needed to be installed, I sprayed the whole thing down. It fogged up like crazy and I had to strip all the polyurethane off of it, which was a nightmare. So the wipe on poly kept it pretty clean looking and you know this was outside for a month last year uh, in the rain and snow and it just got a little bit of surface rust. Other than that, it's in really good shape. It was pretty much stored inside a garage for the last year and it didn't get a lot of oxidation. So, but it was definitely a challenging project. Um, I'd love to make another one. If anybody wants one, shoot me an email. And uh, it looks great on display. I hope this video was informative, you know, uh, if anything, I'm sure you saw something that you never seen before. 700 pound steel menorah is not something you come across every day, but hope you like this. Leave me a comment. Check us out on Instagram at Make Everything Shop, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more content. Again, I'm Chris Zep from Make Everything, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.